Welcome to another edition of the Parents Lounge Tuesday Hello. Night Parental Mental Health Night. I'm and with, I uh, of course, Kate Mulligan and Jason Gowan. I am uh, Jamie Keeler. Uh, we are the Parents Lounge. We have a fantastic show for you tonight. Uh, I just cooked two full meals, uh, one for my children and one for my wife. And and I'm, I just cracked a bottle of wine and I'm, I don't know about you guys. I'm ready to fire it up. How are you guys feeling tonight? <laughs> I also am. I also cracked a bottle of wine. I grabbed some from the Mountain Lake Winery that that uh, sponsored our show. Uh, That's a generous pour, son. <laughs> For those of you who are listening and not watching this, uh, Jason has a wine glass that has a meniscus at the top because yeah. he has he has poured it over the lip. It is it is only surface pressure is holding that wine in the glass. You're like it's one of those a goblet. With, um, he's got the. Uh, the NASCAR like? uh, oh. 128 uh, ounce soda. You know those guys. It's like, hey, I like petty, and you also like uh, diabetes because you have a lot of soda in that mug. Look, if if the diabetes means that I survive my kids today, I don't fucking care. Yeah. I just yeah. don't fucking Dude, care. Trust me, I'm ordering insulin right now from uh, Norway. We're gonna be just fine. I got a lot of. It. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we have a here. great show. We have such a wonderful guest tonight. I'm pretty excited. I don't know where she's in the green room, and I don't know where we know each other, but I feel like we know each other know from something. 25 years in Hollywood at least. Uh, what and- if she comes on this show, Jamie, and she's like, I can't, I can't believe you don't remember. We were. I honestly, we I talked a, to Jason today. I was like, I feel like we work together, and I went through her <gasps> IMDb, and there's a lot of there's a lot of similar hits. I was gonna say. Jamie, let me tell you something. Working with you at a certain point meant working with you. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, please. I tried, I tried to work with as many people in Hollywood as I put. You know, any port in a storm. I like. I just like. How's that working out for you? For me, it's about the human contact. It's about the emotion, and it's about sharing, sharing intimacy. That's really what acting's all about. I don't know about you guys. I uh... <laughs> listen. <laughs> At this point, I'm just trying to remember the other parents in my kids' uh, grade. So at, at, I still, it's like she's in third grade and I still walk by people at school and I go, hey man, what's up? Well, I know we've been together for four years and I still, no idea. So I'm that guy. So everybody be cool. All right, listen, we have a great show for you tonight. We are going to bring our guest in right after our, our little opening. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to it, um, be sure to subscribe because we're doing all kinds of crazy off off day shows and we need uh, we need some support. If you're doing it on iTunes, get for the love of God, write a review. Take two seconds. Come because on. I'm insecure and I need to hear that I'm doing a good job. And Jason Mulligan makes, yeah, yeah. is hanging on by a thread. By right? a thread, you guys. You can tell. You can tell by the fact that I showered just prior to the show and didn't put any makeup on that I really care what people well, think about me. We thought that you got caught in a rainstorm, but I get I get it now. But like a cool rainstorm, like Central Park with Robert Redford. There was only one umbrella. He tried to protect you the best he could, but you got a little wet. But it's all cool. And then you guys had sex. That's oh! What- yeah, yeah he's like, you're in mood today. Well, Taylor's on one. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna be a good show. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. Also, we're on uh, we're on Twitch, which I have no idea how that works, but I do know Facebook is a big part of our uh, our brand. So, if you are um, watching this on Facebook, any of the different pages that we share it on, be sure to um, find the Parents Lounge, like, subscribe, and uh, and follow, and please comment. Because that's the beauty of doing this live. And we have such a wonderful guest tonight who has such a body of work um, behind her. And I want, I, it's always more fun when all the people who are watching comment and ask questions and have snide remarks, which I, I find. You know what I found interesting? When I when we, we posted that she was coming on the show, I'm, I'm not joking, like 15 dudes came forward and they're like, she was my first crush. She was my first crush. Honestly, that's my, that might be where I know her. I don't yeah. know. It's, she she was your first crush? Right. Jamie, you were a teenager in 1964. I say, yeah, I was going to say, Jamie, I think. I'm too old, actually. My first yeah. crush was like, uh, I think it was. Um, Laura Olivia. Ingalls Wilder, but like the actual character, not on a TV show. Oh, I was going to say Annie Oakley from like 1885, but what, I, I might have gone too far back. Was that too crazy? I think you're uh, like Mary think, Todd Lincoln had a body on her. Oh, dude, she was, and you knew she had those birth and hips. She just really Woo! got that. Uh, right. I think Betty Rubble was one of my, actually, my first one was probably Bewitched. 
I had, I still to this day, Elizabeth Montgomery. I, she's she's in she's on the list. I was like, no, well, Elizabeth, I'm like gold. Cool. All right, listen. Hey, we're gonna leave you 90 seconds with our opening song, which is wonderful. If you want to sit and listen to it and watch some pictures, it's fantastic. But if you're not, um, if you're not ready for the show with a cocktail in your hand, then you should probably go take the 90 seconds of the opening credits and go make a drink. Mulligan? Yeah, unless you're sober, which we support you also. Yeah, and if you're sober, just sit back and be quiet and enjoy enjoy the opening. I mean, you're, you're saying there's a the parents out there with children and they're they're sober? Yeah, they're in recovery. You know what I mean? They're oh. they are the they are the superheroes out there. Yes. Uh, are they? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they yes, Jamie. Yes, yes, yes Jamie, yes. I, Isn't it harder to parent drunk and hungover? <laughs> Isn't that actually harder? Aren't we the heroes? Aren't they doing it the easy way? Don't you? Whatever. All right, you choose Lady Duff Duff the rest of this show. You got 90 seconds, Jason. Hit it. We could have homes on separate cools, go dive in grease with squids. Could have been so bleeping rich, but instead we had kids. They won't smile for a photo, they won't eat the food we choose. That's why we're heading to the parents' lounge to drown ourselves in booze. Every day we're more exhausted, we haven't slept in years. Hit me in the nuts so bad my eyes filled up with tears And yes, we'd like to fake our death and go off of the grids But the truth is we are softies and we truly love our kids So join us every Tuesday night to laugh at all our pain Evening in the parents' lounge is the cure to staying sane. Hello. Hello, welcome back. Um, let's get into this. Let's get let's get this lovely woman back uh, into our show. Yes, yeah, let's do it. You guys probably know her from the. T- TGIF uh, Friday night lineup on ABC. Look at how. Oh, she's great. What are you drinking? She went and blow dried her hair. Did you feel it? She oh, did some okay. hair stuff. Gotcha. Anyway, you know our, our guest tonight from TGIF. You know her from Hollywood Darlings, Family Guy, pretty much every show that was ever made, Christine Lakin has been part of. So, ladies and gentlemen, our guest tonight, Christine Lakin. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, look at her. Is she frozen? She's frozen. Unmute. Unmute. But I mean, also, Jamie, that's the that's just not even the tip of the iceberg. She's frozen. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's maybe she works in still photography. Maybe she's just a model and not an. Is actor. she? Someone ask her if she's in Claire's house. Are you in Claire's I house? In Claire's, she, are you on Claire's Wi-Fi? That feels I about. Think right. It might be a Max Headroom impression. Yeah. She is. It's John Patrick Murphy goes perfect. perfect start. Start. Here yeah. she comes in. She's coming in on a second. She's coming in on two devices. Yeah, and yeah. And she's out. I'll listen. I'll take her. However, we can get her. She needs to do her phone. I'm. I'm for it. There we go. Oh, good. Are you there here? She is. I'm back. Can you hear me? You are, yeah. you are back. Uh, yeah. Hello. Zach would infer you were here before, which you were not. So you're you are not back, but you're here. <laughs> You're here. Look at you. How are you? Oh, she's on mute. There we go. I can't hear any of you. This is a problem. Oh, hold on. Okay. Okay. See, this is what happens. The big stars, they don't make it to sound check. They just don't do it. And then all of a sudden it all falls apart and yeah. up and we yeah. lost it. Well, listen. listen, I've already cooked two meals tonight. <laughs> so Jamie, whole... take us through your, your meal prep while she... Sure. Let's let's start with uh, how I got into this and why I'm in such an energetic mood, because I just made two meals. My wife is on a blue apron kick right now, Mulligan. I got to tell you, I, I I did not understand what it was years ago when Neil was born. I'm like, this will be really good for me to cook. Like, uh, then I won't have to figure out what meals when I have a newborn. 
Mm-hmm. When the first step is julienne the carrots, yeah, you can sit and spin on it. As far as I'm, oh, concerned. I had to, um, I had to scrape the fond off of the pan, and I, I googled fond because yeah. I didn't know that that was just the stuff from the meat. Yeah, there's it's. So yeah. we did Blue Apron back in the day when the kids were new, and uh, I wasn't cooking much back then, and I was like, dude, I. You know why I go to restaurants? Because I want other people to cook for me. I'm, yeah. I didn't want to cook back then. Yeah. And so, yeah, you kind of have to do the cooking. So we did it for like a couple months back in the day, and I hated it. And we, I was like, I'm not doing this again. But over the pandemic, I started cooking a lot. Yeah. And so she, um, my wife, has ordered Blue Apron, and uh, we're doing it now. And I'm actually kind of digging it. It's delicious. Huh. I mean, I will say this for the meal. Like, you do make delicious meals <gasps> Christine, oh my god that was probably the most anticlimactic like entrance ever <laughs> i don't know I those triceps <laughs> those triceps and deltoids make a, their own entrance you know what i mean yes. okay, Look control at yourself. i'm gonna apologize I'm for anything Kate mulligan says right out of the gate because i'm allowed to hit on her aren't i good lord that's up there. Sure. Christine, we were it's talking about the fact that tonight I had to uh, I had to cook Blue Apron. Have you ever tried some of the cooking um, things where they send you all the food and then they make you actually like I had a dice of zucchini tonight. How did that go for you? I diced it well, actually. Honestly, I'm I was telling them like we we tried Blue Apron when the baby was first born, like eight years ago, and of course we had no time and it was terrible. And I wanted to I, every night. I was like, we we actually let them rot, like we just never got to it and threw them out. <laughs> and so my wife, of course, tried again, and the meals are great. And because I started to learn uh, cooking over the pandemic, I basically cooked for two years. Uh, I'm kind of enjoying it, but I was Good telling you, mom, I I started. Like during the pandemic, I would have a glass of wine. So now I don't know how to cook without drinking. Mm. I don't. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I don't know. I how used to have an adult. A, yeah. <laughs> I used to have a that's magnet that thing. would say, um, "I like to cook with wine," and sometimes I put it in the food. <laughs> 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 so I think it's. I, I think it's okay. I think it's very French of you. You know, it's very European. I, you know what? I tell myself that every time. Right? But here was here's the real problem. Is so I sent them a photo of, and tonight was uh, vegetarian enchiladas, super good, uh, zucchini with some poblano peppers all chopped up in this thing. And I sent it, and Mulligan's comment was, "There's no way your kids are eating one bite of that. Zero percent chance." And no. I was like, "No, this is the second meal I made yeah. them: chicken parmesan with vegetables and some pasta." And then I had to make the meal that my wife wanted. Mm. It's like a short order cook at my house. Like from five to seven, that's the window of food. Are you, the kitchen's closed. Are you ladies doing that? Are you are you taking special orders with your meals with your kids? No, sir. <sighs> it's really hard, you know, because there's some nights where I want to have like spicy chicken curry. And I get it, like a three and a half year old is not going to eat that. So I, I can see to, you know, make a, a second meal during those times when I'm like, I want to eat what I want to eat. But um, I'm trying as much as I can to cook for all of us because being a short order cook or even being a head chef, it, it's not the what I signed up for. You know, this is not, I don't need another career. I have plenty of careers. <laughs> <laughs> also do this now. So do I. But do you then end up eating macaroni and cheese and chicken nuggets most nights of the week? The amount of food my husband and I clean up off of plates, like cold carbs, is alarming. There's no reason why I think to myself, like this ma- this old mac and cheese is just going to go to waste if I don't eat it. Like I don't need to eat it. I can throw <laughs> it out or save it for them for tomorrow. Why am I eating off this plate? Just stop. <laughs> I posted yeah, a picture one time that was the kids. So I, I feed the kids breakfast and then I take them to school and then I come back and their plates is like a half eaten egg sandwich, two slices of a tangerine, four blueberries. And that's my breakfast. Like I eat uh, like a, a pancake, uh, like a mini pancake with like three bites out of it, just the rim or the crust. I'm the king yeah. of eating the crust of toast. Like, I'll take some peanut butter and put it on the crust and eat it. Totally. I, can't, I can't watch the food go to waste. I'm think- sort of like a late night chef at Denny's where like I, th- my sons come in like drunken assholes and <sighs> they, they take the food that they've ordered 
mac and cheese, hot dogs, and then they throw it all over the floor, the walls, their mother, <laughs> and then they storm out and leave me with no tip. Yeah. I mean, yep, that is a Denny's. <laughs> That's that is an accurate. Yep. Mm -hmm. that might even you might even be working at a Waffle House, Jason. Have you checked? I didn't check the sign today, but I will. Yeah, on my you should out check because yeah. it could. o'clock out soon. Yeah. Sure. yeah. yeah. Joe Bo says, I, dude, I am. I know it's not my fault. I'm from a generation where my parents never wasted food. Like my mother, she would save like one bite of banana bread and then put it in the freezer. And then two weeks later, break it out, toast it, jam it, and then <laughs> put it in her mouth. I kind of grew up like that. Why? Okay. You just acted out a raccoon. Your mom was also a raccoon. And then she would put it in her mouth. All right. So listen, Christine, I'm sorry. We got, we, we got off on the wrong foot. You <laughs> That's pretty much the, the show. Yeah, welcome. To um, show. You have a lot of fans out there who are like very excited that you're going to be here. And um, you have, tell us about uh, oh, your story. my mom and all her friends. <laughs> your mom, yes, yeah, your mom actually <laughs> called me earlier today. She wanted to, she asked some questions I wanted, to, I, I have for you. Um, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. She, she can never get me off, let me off the phone. So, <laughs> um, um, yeah, well, fire well, away. What do you, children. you have two kids? Mm. Two kids. I have two children. Um, I have a five-year-old girl, almost six, be six this weekend, and a three-and-a-half-year-old. So they are almost two and a half years apart, almost to the day. Um, yeah. So yeah, pan the pandemic was super fun. Um, <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was like uh, crazy making, as I'm sure it was for, for uh, anyone who had children under five um, in any kind of number. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, things are like finally kind of leveling out. I've got them both in school now. So this is just like, I mean, for many years, we like, we had, a, we had somebody like as soon as Georgia went to school, then her brother was born. There was always like somebody like hanging on an appendage of ours. And now they're both like in school at least four days a week. And my husband and I look at each other and we're like, this is amazing. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty great. <laughs> yeah. The masks, masks are coming off in uh, on the twelfth. No masks at school. In that's LA. what we hope. I mean, I mean let's hope. I yeah. I think a lot, a lot of it has to do with. I'm on the PTA, so yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let me ask you this because so I that's know exciting. You, uh, um, did you grow up out here? Is that how you became a child actor, or were you somewhere else and then came here to act? No, I grew up in Atlanta. Um, and when I was like, you know, six, seven, eight, I was doing tons of theater there. I was a dancer. I was in like a dance company and a theater company and kind of just through happenstance and a little bit of luck started doing commercials when I was really little and um, did some TV movies, like all just like local stuff, a couple of national things, but it was all, you know, pretty local. And then I had an agent from Los Angeles spotted me doing theater in South Georgia, which is like the most random thing ever. Um, random. I came out to LA. <laughs> then, yeah. <laughs> then came out to LA that's the following like year um, for my spring break. That's a, that's a scene from I a know. movie. Hey, you, you want to be a star? That's actually how I thought it would happen. I was like, if I just do theater on this corner here, maybe someone will see me from the big city. But it actually worked for you. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's really bizarre. I mean, I feel like so much of like career is hard work, but also being at the right place in the right moment. Um, and uh, I came out, I did some auditions, didn't think much of it, went back to Atlanta. And then while I was here, I had done like a demo tape because this is before Zoom and anything like that. So you had to have something to showcase yourself. So here I am doing this like crying monologue and like, you know, just giving like something for people to look at. And um, a producer from Full House saw it from the booth where I was like, he was walking through the booth, saw me doing this thing, asked who I was, nothing came of it. A month and a half later, they're looking for somebody for the TV show Step by Step and they can't find anyone. They've literally like seen everybody in LA and and he's like, hold on, what about that kid that was crying? Let's get that tape. Let's see that girl. So I get this call, like they want to see you in Los Angeles. And I'm like, this is crazy. Nobody goes across the country to audition. Like I was like, this is stupid. We should this I can't no, this is like this is beyond. And my dad's like, hey, 
I've got a frequent flyer mile or two. You want to go out? It might be like a fun story for your kids one day. And so we kind of came out on a whim and I auditioned and then got the pilot and then the show ran seven years and, you know, and then everything else has been downhill ever since. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it was a great experience. <laughs> yeah. Would yeah. you ever? But yeah. So it was, like, I mean, it was a super random moment. Um, would you ever, like, if your kids wanted to get into acting, because Jamie said, like, yeah, he would, he would let, right, Jamie, didn't you say you would let your kids get into acting? But, like, if you're, Christina, they're you're, offer only. My yeah. kids are offer only. <laughs> That's how I roll. They, and they've called, people have called, and I'm like, offer only, man. Unless it's, like, if it was something for step-by-step, step, like a series regular, we'll, we'll come in. We'll read for that. But, like, sometimes they're like, hey, can you send your kids to a go-see? It pay, if, if they book the job, it pays $150, and um, they give up usage for seven years. And you're like, no. I'm not doing that. I mean, I just feel like it, you being, like, actual working actors, like people who have made your career acting, like – I feel like there are some people that have great experiences with them. And they're like, yep, if it's in their blood, I'm not going to talk them out of it. And then there are some people like, I will do anything to stop them from getting into this <laughs> shithole business. I wanted to act, but talent was always the issue. <laughs> it hasn't stopped a lot of people. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. That's I don't know why you let that hold you back. Look, I'm banking on when Danny DeVito or John Lovitz die, I'm in. So I think Christine is frozen again. I think she's just angry at us. I think she's very still. She's, she's very, very angry. So, Christine, if you can, go out, because your sound's terrible anyway. Go out, come back in, try to use Firefox. Use Firefox as your, um, uh, what's that called? Browser. As a browser. Browser, thank you. Um, so you have no bedside manner to speak of, Kaylor. You're like, hey, your sound's terrible anyway. Get out. Like, terrible. <laughs> No, I love her. She's she's great. She sounds terrible. And I'm going to be quiet after she comes back. Listen, I made two meals and I started drinking when we had the first meal. So I'm I'm hanging on by a thread, man. It's, also, it's, it's, question for you. Do you ever take a picture that's not this face? No, that's my funny face. It's like, yeah, it's like, so a lot of people listen to this on iTunes, though, and they're like, what face is he talking about? Oh, there's my, there's my cheese it, enchilada. Like Are that. they not cheese? They're vegetarian. And they were, vegetarian. Uh, they look amazing. They look amazing. They're actually super good. Yeah, you would have enjoyed them. I would have. I feel bad for uh, Christine. We lost her. She's, I know. It's she's got Claire. She's got Claire problems with the internet. We we got we got to start sound checking people with uh, internet stuff. You know, the more attractive you are, the 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 worse your your internet connection is. Because I never have any issue at all. Thanks, um, Mama Jason. Gets, Mama <laughs> so we can never hear you. Like you you always start out <laughs> no, funky. I'm no, I'm like I've, I yeah my my internet's perfect because I am just that what? gnarly. Um. How was, your, how was your guys' week? So it was Claire's birthday this week. Um, so we only had seven birthday parties. Oh, and I just watched Encanto for the uh, seventh time. Yeah, that's great. I, because she had an Encanto uh, birthday party. Um, how did, you, did, you, did that? The last time we saw you was on Claire's birthday. And, and it wasn't going well. It wasn't. It could have gone better. Well, here's the problem with kids today. It, it's like, I don't, I don't know if it's. Like in my day, you were just you were like, oh, some sheet cake, and uh, they blew up. Uh, they we played tug of war, whatever. And you're yeah. like, hey, people showed up for my birthday. We had a crazy birthday, two days really, because one 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 a couple of kids forgot it was that day, so they said, oh, we'll come by tomorrow. And so because they forgot that the party was on Saturday, I had to throw a second party on no, Sunday. That's that's no no. <laughs> No, no, um, no, Caitlin. Okay, no, we'll come by. You know, we'll come no. by on Sunday and say hi. So they stayed not invited. Hours and we had two. Basically, Claire had two parties. And you do not, Joe Bo knows. No, you Dude, don't. That's been the running gag in the house. Of like, seriously, and it, it'll be like a throwaway late in the day of like, I don't know where to be. Like, so everyone's on the same page. We're not talking about Bruno. Christine, how are oh you? My God, you guys. Okay, sorry. I just I just had to change devices like three times. I've, I my iPad kept crashing. I've got too was, many kid games on that damn thing. Was it because I asked if you would let your kids act? Yes, that was you're it. like I I was like screw this. I basically flipped the table. It's just a humble brag. She wanted to let everyone know she has three devices. Oh, God no, but they're all so old. They're all from like 2012. Next right, week, I'm just going to be on the watch. She's actually on a Kindle right now. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> um, Okay, to uh, to answer your question, you know, if if my kids wanted to act, of course, I 
I'm never going to yeah. deny them anything they really want to do. Am I pushing them into it? No. no. Yeah. And when people are like, oh my God, you know, they're such naturals or they're so outgoing or whatever, you should get them into it. I'm like, eh. I think about it for about two minutes. And then I'm like, who's driving them to the audition? Who's sitting in the waiting room? Who's going with them when they book the job? Who's working on the lines? Who's ironing the costume? Like, yeah. Mama don't got time for that. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That is right. So true. Also, no. can they cry? Can they cry in the booth? That's the real question. If they That's can the cry question. in a booth, I got a guy at Nick I can introduce them to. Yeah. Like, can you use your evil powers for good? You know, <laughs> or is it only at home when your brother is like sometimes like slightly tormenting you? Like, can you channel that and get a paycheck? That's what we got to know. That's you know? Really Do you funny. have a child that has, as you reincarnated? Do you have one that's just like you? What's interesting is my daughter is. God, she has a lot. My mom says that she has a lot of my traits, but she is, um, she's not like me in that when I was her age, I was trying to entertain everyone. Like if there was a willing audience, willing or not, honestly, it yeah. didn't matter. Like my grandparents, my, my elder, like uncles, uh, my younger cousins, I would entrap you and make you listen to the entire Annie record album while I sang to it. If you were sitting there and you couldn't get up and move because you were so old, that was like my best. That was my best yeah. audience. Um, You're like, Ma, daughter, can you drop me off at the nursing home? I think yeah, nowadays it's actually called elderly abuse. Yeah. <laughs> well, my daughter is not what, like that. When we were kids, there was like one of you in the class, right? Like when we were kids years ago, there was like one kid and then American Idol happened. And now every, I feel like the greater percentage of kids are like that, where they're like, hey, you want to hear me sing? And you're like, no, not really. I think it started with, I think it started with our generation though, because there was already Star Search. True. Oh, yeah. true. Star Search was big. Yeah, yeah, that's true. yeah. I feel like. You know the thing that they really want to do now though, which scares me? Oh, They want to be YouTubers. I was about to say. My daughter and I don't let page. them. She's like, can I, I start a YouTube watch, page? No. Yeah, I don't let them watch a lot of YouTube. But I'm also like, I don't want to be that parent. Like when I was a kid, I was making videos with the camcorder. Yeah. Starting probably in third grade, I was making book reports with a camcorder. I was yeah. doing like a book up rap review of like, today we're reading Ronald, Ronald Dahl, like whatever. Because I just wanted to put the camera in my hand. And I was constantly making my friends perform and do commercials. So at the same time, it's like, I kind of did that. I just wasn't showing the world because I didn't have a platform for it. So I don't yeah, know. They could, they, yeah. Because you're also like that one dude from opening boxes made $24 million last year. So oh. at some point you're like, well, <laughs> actually that's a real, that's a real career. I you mean, know? it could be, you it, know. He there. makes me so yeah. mad. I throw his stuff on the floor when I see it. At one time. Yeah. I have two of them living on my block who are huge 21 year old bought like a crazy house down the street she does like craftopia or whatever i forget what her, her page is huge multi-millionaire like 20 oh, years God. old Just that's crazy of, it's crazy, crazy. Oh. so i don't know what the answer is i mean and it's hard because i'm in a i also i can't navigate the internet like they can like they're so good at it and i'm like Oh, uh, there's some dude somewhere in Minnesota in a basement who's trying to talk to my eight-year-old kid. Right. Who was nanny through the nanny can. Like, it's freaking me out when I when Yeah. I yeah, I know. You got to be, like, really careful. I mean, they they love the ninja kids. And this is, like, a family of, like, I think they have five children. And now I'm obsessed with, like, watching them because I'm like, where do they live? Who are they? How does this family have all this money? They, kids just make videos all the time. But they all, like, do gymnastics and kung fu and karate. And they can all flip around. And they make these, like, insane videos. And my kids, like, love them. They, like, think they're, they, I mean, they think they're, like, movie stars. You know, which I guess they are to them. They're, they are. They're, yeah. You know. It's the next medium because like, it's like TV with Lucille Ball in the fifties, but like movie stars would never do 50, you know, like TV. And then right. all of a sudden TV became the big thing. And now kids don't even watch TV. They watch YouTube all the yeah. time. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't, I don't have know. your kids, have your kids seen anything that you've done? Um, a couple of things. Um, I did, we did during like the beginning of the pandemic, uh, we put on a few episodes of Step by Step. Great show. And great show. We can all say <laughs> great. Everybody, great show, everybody. Right. Great show. 
thank you. Best show. <laughs> um, but my, and I just was curious. I was just like, is she going to notice? Is she going to like think anybody sound, looks familiar? And she watched the Did first she? episode and I asked her, I'm like, does anyone look familiar? And she kind of like looked and then she kind of looked at me and then she kind of looked again. And I was like, and then I sort of prompted her and she's like, yeah. I said, do you see mommy? And then she kind of like pointed. It's like, is that you? And I was like, yeah. I, and then I, I said, do you want to watch another episode? She goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I got it. Fair I enough. Got it. I got I got. I got you watched going one. With. She enjoyed it, but she was over uh, it. So, you know, oh, kids God. keep you humble, definitely. Yeah. Just just when you, you're feeling good about yourself, your kid will yeah. come in and tell you you got a squishy belly. That's Thanks, it. Neil. <laughs> Trina, I feel like that came from a place of experience. Hmm? No, I just uh, hi, it's just a hypothetical. <laughs> That's how you smell like rotten eggs and you have a squishy belly. I just I just got off the top of my head. <laughs> my six year old looked at me and told me, "Do you have a beard because you want to hide all of your chins?" Oh, and I said, <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's what it is. It's just my kids are very. They're very outgoing. Like they can't stop talking to people. They really have a problem. Like we just took a trip uh, to see family, and when they got on the plane, my son's like, "Hi, hi, how are you? How you doing?" And as he's walking through, he's like, "You look like grandma. You look like grandpa. These are not people." who are probably the age to have grandchildren. It's like, that's a compliment, I'm sure. And it's very cute for someone who's already a grandparent. But when you're just like offering out that, who's like. Uh, oh. Oh. oh, I think she's going to catch she's, up. I think, uh, oh, we lost. Oh, sh- Hear oh, me? Okay. Yeah, there oh, we now go. Now we can. I, I feel like we really missed the punchline to a great story, though. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 It was so tight. It was there. And then um, <gasps> uh, we lost her again. <sighs> you know, one day the internet will work for us. I just want to, I, I mean, I know, I know I can't beat this to death, but you know, I'm going to try. I really want to know how she got that definition in her arms. Toned. It's called toned. exercise. I'm not sure. Oh, um, exercise. No. <laughs> No. Okay, never mind. I'm good. I'm good with these chubs. Diet and time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know anything about it personally, but I've read about it. She got way, steroids. It's all steroids, Molly. Did anyone else's uh, four-year-old grab them today and scratch them with their razor claw the way my child did? No. no. Their razor claw? Razor claw. Just like his his claw that's as sharp as a razor because his mother doesn't cut his nails enough. Oh. I thought anyway. like your, your kid had a shiv of some sort. No. No. Christine, you're back. Christine, you're back. <laughs> Hi. I got a robocall and I don't apparently know how to use my phone. Oh, by the way, that was me. And do you want to give me your social security number? <sighs> I need it Sorry. because you have a payment that is due to you. So, And also someone in Zambia needs your help. Yes. Also, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, it's, but he's a prince. So you're he's in He's a lock. prince. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just go get a phone card and we'll yeah, put some money just, on it. Oh <laughs> um, thank you, Kate. Some of us are not allowed to ask. Allowed to ask what? So, oh, I missed um, something. Apparently, Christine, did you send some photos in? Do you have some, yeah. photos? some crazy I did. stories, I think. The problem is I, everyone's heard everyone's heard every one of Mulligan's and mine and Jason's stories. We need some new yes. to this show. Here's why kind of we designed this thing. It's a parental mental health Tuesday. And so when we do this, the people who watch and, and when we watch, we see other people tell horrible stories about their lives, and it makes us feel better about our oh, lives yeah. with yeah. our children. Definitely. So, so make the, us feel better, Christine. <laughs> where would you like to start, Christine? Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, I, there have been so many parenting fails over the years. I mean, I, I will say there was like, I sent you a photo of just, you know, it's my daughter and my son. I think they're probably naked. We were outside. We were painting. This is like early on in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It just got to the point where like the paper wasn't fun. Like they were just like getting naked. They were just, they started to paint themselves. I mean, she's fully covered in paint. She's covered her brother in paint. It's just Lord of the Flies. Yeah. And that went on for, I hate to admit. (laughs) Look at how cute. I mean, it went on for a long time. And my feet are painted. Like this 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 was really... Yeah, and then I would just hose them man. down. I, I just took a hose. I would yeah. hose them down in the backyard, and then we would just start over. Oh, so that, that, was, that was a Woodstock recreation. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like the Blind Faith album. Does anybody? <laughs> anybody? 
Yes, actually. Blind Faith from like 1960 <laughs> something where the girl is topless. Oh. Was it no? Um, you we know what? Also... I love? Can you put that back up for one second because it brought me, it brought back some memories. You see the tricycle in the back? Yeah. Yes. So when we were kids, we had tricycles. There were three wheels, pedals, and a thing. And apparently some kid rode off a cliff or something because then they said, you know what? The parents need a handle on the back of the tricycle. Do you know the tricycle where the parents then have the little handle thing on the back? Oh, they yeah. Do. That's how one has it. Yeah. Well, you help steer the kid. Yeah. That's how uh, helicoptering of a parenting society is nowadays. Like they were like, God, I mean, this, who knows if these kids can figure this shit out? There's, there's three <laughs> wheels, yeah. pedals. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want one kid to f have bad feelings about the fact that he can't use a tricycle. Why don't we? Well, let's put a parental handle on the back, and then the parents can push. They can push the tricycle around and make the kid feel strong about what they're doing. Anybody? I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't know how to tell you. I think they still make regular tricycles too. I think it's just have, the age that that age. handle pops off. That handle oh, pops off. Yeah, for one. When I bought a tricycle yeah. for my kid, I was like, "Why do I have a handle? Why am I involved in this? This is a, <laughs> it's a you problem." Totally. Figure totally. it out. Or honestly, if you can't figure this out, I, I, I you're never going to make it through life. There's no chance. You can, this is a tricycle. Jamie, you never you know were... when you're going to have to off road. I mean, like our back, our backyard is, I have to say, it's a little bumpy, you know? So I, I, for me, I needed to use that thing every so often because they'd be like, mama. And I'd be like, oh, we had it. You know? <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm not throwing stones. I, we had the same thing. I was like, why am I doing this? And I was like pushing my kid around the block on a tricycle. I was like, pedal. And she's like, pedal. No, I'm good. And she would hold her feet up. And she'd be like, you, kid, you do it, dad. I go, what the fuck? My kid, would actually put, my kid would put his feet on the handlebars. It was like he just be like, he was just, just leisurely. He, yeah, out. and I was like, I guess. All right, listen. If it's gonna keep you quiet for these twelve minutes that we take a lap around the block, I'm good to push you. We had three separate birthday parties for Claire's seventh. We had one on the day Tuesday. We had uh, one on Saturday, and then we had more people over Sunday for like a weekend pool party for my kid's seventh birthday party. Finally, everybody leaves, and then Claire was sobbing. <laughs> I'm alone now. There's nobody here. I don't have anyone to play with anymore. I go, you said a 48 hour party, dude. What's the problem here? But yeah. that's where they are. Like, I, I don't yeah. feel like we were like that. I know. I, you know, when my parents, when I was young, my parents would constantly have people over and you would literally just go to bed with like the roar of partying. Happening. Yes. You know, oh. they'd be laughing yeah. and like, yeah, and it it was really comforting to me because yes. I'd always be like, oh, I know they're down there, you know. Um, we had a few people over on uh, last Saturday, and we were hanging on the deck. And my daughter, like, she knew this. My son went to bed. I put, and we must have put her to bed four times. She could not stand the fact that she had so much FOMO. Yeah. about missing out on this party. I was like, go to bed, go to bed. So true. I remember she waiting at the top of the of stairs and like sort of like eavesdropping to like down what my parents oh, like. Yeah. What are they? I'm like, oh, I heard a dirty word. <gasps> like it was just, I don't, I mean, I, I was, if I knew I'd get my ass beat if I went down the stairs. So I just went, waited at the top. I used to that's listen through the register vent because it, you could hear better through oh, that. Oh yeah, thing. that's true too. That's true. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Um, but I have a lot more parenting fails. I mean, I feel yeah. like a lot of them happened during the pandemic, but not limited to. I mean, we were cutting our kids' hair, and it mm. also was during the time of, like, Tiger King, when mm. that was really popular. And um, we kind of, but maybe on purpose, cut our son's hair just like Tiger King. And oh, we have, a like, photo. a... Do we have a photo of this one? Is this the video? I think it's a video, Is yeah. This... Of... No. Uh... My... Touch? Not yet. Very nice. Last time, last one, last one. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Now? Now, Mom? I mean, he looks insane. He looks... He looks awesome. He just needs a little mustache. That's all. It's like a little Fu Man too. Did you yeah. make him? Did you make him Joe Exotic for the for Halloween? Because that was a missed opportunity. 
<laughs> I know. It was like, I think we were just had just been watching it. And so it just kind of was on purpose, but like also just in the zeitgeist of our minds. Um, we also went through a whole phase of dyeing hair. We did a lot of hair stuff. My friend had sent me some hair dye and I was like, this will be a fun thing we'll do one day. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh. My hair oh my was God. purple. My son hated it. And my daughter, his, like, I ruined his her. His teeth coming in? His, like, I know. three it's random for teeth? Your daughter, though. I, she's got, a like, a, a shark boy yeah. and lava girl vibe going on. <laughs> my Every time we'd look at her, though, like, until it washed out, which took a really long time, my husband's like, I feel like I'm watching an episode of Intervention every time I look at her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Oh God! Oh my God! I, you I, seem like a cool, laid-back, not helicopter pilot mom. I try not to be. You know, I well, it's I mean, cool, I, especially I, since <laughs> were you when you were a kid. I mean, you were on a show, and we know from Drew Barrymore how that typically goes. Like you're in Hollywood, you're on a show. I been on shows i know how it works and you were your parents super involved when you were on the shows or were they just kind of like go do what you do um yeah my mom uh, i'm an only child so my mom came with me from atlanta and she stayed with me and she was really like the guardian the you know the chef the taxi cab driver the manager like my mom had wore a lot of hats um my dad was working and traveling and his corporate office was in san jose california so he just would use the corporate office and then he would fly down on the weekends. And it really wasn't that different than when my dad would travel and we lived all in Atlanta. But you weren't rapping so. and heading out to like uh, the rainbow mm-hmm. room for cocktails. No, like I, to be clear, I was trying to do all the things. I was constantly trying to like push the limits, do the things, find the parties, know the people. And my mom was like, mm, I don't think so. So there was a lot of parental involvement. Um, and I also you went back to her? Did you have fights with her? No, I mean, I I had a healthy fear of my parents, I think, mm-hmm. as a kid. And uh, I think that's also something a lot of children don't have today. Yes. <laughs> or maybe we're, ta- we're taught as parents now that we have to, like, let them have all the feelings and, like, be their friends and all of this. And that was not the case. There was a definite hierarchy when I was a child. I am the kid. They are the authority. Yeah. And it was like, it, you know, that it yeah. was like a real separation of church and state there. So That's really funny um, that you say that. Do you, do you, do you rule like that? Cause I do. I do. For the most I part, do. I do. I try to be, I think I am a good communicator and I try to be really empathetic about, it cause I don't want them not to talk to me. Like I did too much sneaking when I was 15, 16. So I did too much sneaking. Cause I was just like, I'm I was so afraid of like getting, like I couldn't ask because yes. I knew it was going to yes. be no. So yeah. I would just sneak and lie and like try to get around it. And then I get caught and it would be horrible, you know? So, um, and I'm talking about like trying like, you know, go out to a party or like, you know, go out and like sneak a beer or whatever. Um, I'm talking about an extra room. Oreo. To be I'm fair, talking those about are Hollywood parties. I, so you could easily be trafficked. Like those are Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you can't just say it's like a party from like suburban. You're like, it's a party. You're like, like it was Patrick serious, Duffy's serious, 40th, you guys. <laughs> it was, it was the cast of California Dreams. They all lived in the same complex. <laughs> like, we were just trying to get there, okay? That's a true yeah. story. <laughs> um, <laughs> my party's I'm just trying to go to a party uh, at David Lee Roth's house. And um, <laughs> I don't know, he wanted me to wear a tube top. It got weird. And then my mom showed up and I left. <laughs> Like that's I feel the like that of- was an experience Jamie actually had. Like David Lee Roth. Yeah, my mom top. did not show up, and I wore the fucking tube top. Let's just say that. And it went <laughs> no, but like with my kids, like I'll do the thing, and this is lately. This is how it's been going. Uh, they'll they fight a lot. They're very very competitive, and so eventually I'm making dinner or something, and someone will slap someone, and I'll hear a scream, and it'll be like, "Mom, you know, he did this, and but she did that, da da da," and I can't tell like what's actually going on. So, but I know someone's lying. So I'll do this thing where I just look at them and I'm like, are you telling me the truth? Yes, mama, yes. Okay, well, let's review the tape. And I put my phone in my hand and I just start pressing buttons. And they're like, huh? And I'm like, there's cameras all over these rooms. Oh, I'm so obsessed be lying to with me you. Because I will review the tape right now. You want to tell me again? And they're like, okay, I did it. I'm like, thank you for being honest with me. 
you need to go to your room for a little while. <laughs> then that's kind of like how I, I also like that. I did not believe you were from Atlanta until you just started momming on us. And I was yeah. like, do I need to review the tape? Do I need? Yeah. I heard. Yeah. Oh, the South came out, honey. Yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah. Medea. Did you? I just heard really Medea. Was it? Is it Medea? Is that Medea? It was a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> am I, I pronouncing? I don't want to mispronounce Medea. Yeah. Is it Medea? Well, you went for it. So Wait, it's... do you actually have the cameras or are you Kamala? Kamala. 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 Uh, I'm. Kamala I'm mostly Medea. bullshitting. One camera, but like it, you can be. I couldn't see what they were doing from that camera. You can see yeah. like a plant in the top of like. You're a like TV. if you ring the doorbell and <laughs> then oh, punch that, right? your brother, I can but, see you. That's but the greatest. I, I have told heard all. That's the greatest. I'm using that, Christine. Start that's using it. If you yeah. have to, just put fake cameras around. It doesn't yeah. matter. Like it will root out anything that you need to root out. And like if you, you know, I, I feel like there's a lot of like no, ma'am, in my house. Like it, whatever that southern thing is that comes out, I'm like, no, ma'am, no, 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 ma'am. Like, and somehow that's like the mom voice that I have. <laughs> don't know where that started. I don't know how that happened, but oh they know God. I hate it. So. But it seems like it's working. For the most part, I think it does. I think I, I think it's been working. My son is a real wild card. I mean, three and a half of the boy. Wow, Woo! this is a I, real. I topic. have two. I have twin three year old boys. So yeah, I, I, I feel I, you. I saw that. That gave me like hives. I mean, they look adorable, but also a lot. No, he only refers to one exclusively to his face and to his siblings as the Dark Lord. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Hold on. Hold on. I have a video from him from today. Uh, just, there's something wrong. I don't know. There's something wrong with him. <laughs> How much crack did you do while you were pregnant with him? None at all. Yeah. Oh, genetics are not on your side here. Her answer was her answer was so sincere. How much crack did you do? No, seriously, none. <laughs> and that leads me to believe that there was at least a little crack use. Yeah. The fact that she even responded to that question shows there was tons of crack used. Yeah, I, think you, I think you know that I have a, I have a, I, I question a lot here because yeah, I don't. She I don't follows the mindset of deny, deny, deny. You can smell it. It's, it's like when you say how much crack have you done when the kid and she goes, oh, I didn't do any. She did. Jimmy, you've met the child. There's something wrong. Yeah, this like, there's this, there's <laughs> something wrong there, and I don't, I don't know. Like and I've told you this before, when the egg split, the soul also did, and one of them got like part, and the other got another part. It's not it's the know. omen, man. You got to get those long swords and then just pound it through his chest. Wait, is that too? Do we? Is that no. too? <laughs> Would you guys? That's not me. That's the omen. That's not me. What if your child really is the devil? He's not the that the devil would not look that cute in a diaper. Come that's on, exactly I, I think the devil would look like the devil would have exactly be ridiculously cute. <sighs> the devil's gonna be ugly. No, De honestly, yeah. Brad Pitt might be the devil. That guy's okay. so good looking. <laughs> um, ask ask me and Christina how much crack we did when we were pregnant. We've got answers. How much crack did you guys do when you were pregnant? We talking ass or drugs? <laughs> You got to get her out. I can't with Mulligan. It's too much. Let me just go ahead and put which, the banner up. Which one are we talking? Um, that's such a great hack. I'm totally using that. I'm like, okay, let's yeah. go to the thing. I'm totally using that. You got to. So I mean, you just, you have to think of yourself as being like a private investigator all the time. And you got to like be five steps ahead of the perp. So you know, you come downstairs and like the other day, like I, I'm trying to get my son to stay in his room. I've got the clock and it lights up and, you know, I'm trying like, you don't get up. So the clock lights up the whole thing. Like we haven't quite managed that, but you can hear him. And I go like, hear him. It's like 623. And I'm like, damn it. I hear the scurrying and he's scurrying downstairs. And like, we still have all the locks on the cabinets, but you know, sometimes we snack late at night and we forget to lock it. And anyway, so he's like, he's learned how to use the stools and he's up and I'm seeing the, the tread. He's gotten wise, like all the wrappers to the little candies and the things that he's found. Now they're all neatly stored in the trash can. He's not just leaving them like a trail. Mm. So now I have to get, yeah, I have to get like, I'm, you know, I come downstairs. I'm like, who's eating Snickers? Who's eating Snickers? <laughs> it's like 6.30 in the morning. And I'm already like, let me smell your breath. Yeah. Let me smell your breath. I think maybe Kate has broken into your house. Yeah, I was like, actually, so, sorry, to be clear, 
it was me most of those times. <laughs> you catch him in the backyard, he's got a shovel, he's like burying Snickers wrappers. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Nothing. I wasn't doing anything. Nothing. It's not oh my my mind. Mind. He's like, Jay, I changed my old had diaper. A dedicated backpack that he was storing all his all his empties in. I mean, he's just gonna end up like eating Snickers and like chugging mouthwash. <laughs> <laughs> like confused him so bad now. Oh God. We are yeah. dealing with so our kid my kids are in first and third grade and at school teachers are there's they're handing out snacks. Like sn- snacks. It's all snacks. And so I showed up at 4 45 uh to pick up Hannah and she was in her drama, her Monday afternoon drama class, and she was finishing off a bag of lays and was opening a rice krispie treat. As I walked in and I was like, it's 445. We're having dinner in like 20 minutes when I take you home. But that's like, they are, they're giving out treats. Like when she does a great music lesson, she gets a bag of M&Ms. I'm like, I want to send an email and go, Hey man, either stop that or maybe some carrot sticks or something because then my kid comes home and she's not eating any dinner. And I'm like, well, you're eating, you're eating shit all day. What's happening? I, no. I honestly can't tell whether any of these extracurricular classes are worth it or if she really likes them because I really do think they're all about the chips, the gummy bears and the treats. I think like that you could do that at home and I could save yeah. $160. Yes. <laughs> I do think that's exclusive to private schools though, Jamie, like my kids are not allowed to, eat any like the teachers aren't allowed to give our kids anything in public school that they can get public. Catholic. well my kids are at Catholic public? school so maybe you know they definitely i'm okay with the wine like they get a glass or two of wine every day which is yeah fine. and then a couple of wafers and i'm cool with that because that's part of the fine. that's part of the ceremony it's but not the- wine it's blood yeah, it. yeah. yeah. It's all been sudden, transubstantiated, yeah, okay? You know, all of a sudden I'm at Nutella with uh, pretzel sticks. And I'm like, hey, you got to slow your roll, Jesus. Come on. Yeah, go, go. come on. <laughs> then the Nutella. I can see Joe Bo's comment on that. He's already, he's like, oh, you're on child sacrifice. You've talked about. <laughs> Let's see what Joe Bo has to say about that. Listen, the Nutella represent, represents his bone marrow. And the pretzels <laughs> represent Jesus's. I mean, I don't know. I Whatever gets there. you to church, you know, yes. body of Christ, body of Christ, body of Christ was in the tell You know, it's funny. So tomorrow's Ash Wednesday, and my kids have it's like the beginning of Lent, right? Which I just learned earlier today. And you have to give up something. And so my my uh, my daughter was like, the, the she's in first grade. She comes home and she goes, ah, oh, so apparently kids are giving up something for Lent. Like it was a new. She's like, I I never heard. It. I don't know what's happening, but people are giving up stuff. And she goes, one of my friends is giving up TV, uh, but that would be super hard. So instead, I'm just going to be really kind to people. Okay. <laughs> I know, but I wouldn't like, good for you. That's a great choice. That's an e- easy choice, but yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, giving up my attitude, you know? Yeah. That's all right. Okay. I've given up sobriety for Lent. I yeah, don't know that that's the. I don't know that's. The Do, way am I works. missing the spirit of it? I think you're missing the thread. Yeah, I gave up my children for, for land. Is that? Is I that? don't know if you're part. You partake in the festivities, but we didn't. We didn't really drink this. The pandemic really changed everything. Oof. I don't know about yeah. you, but we all of a sudden. I wasn't going to be on camera. My job was done for like a year, and right. I was like, I'm not going to be on camera tomorrow. So sure, fire it up. Yeah. And Paul, I was telling them I cooked Blue Apron tonight. I don't even I don't even know how to cook if I don't have a glass of wine in my hand. I can't. I don't know how to pull a pan out. I don't know anything without a glass of wine. So. Yeah, I think everybody kind of like had a. They went to you know the superstore of Bevmo there for yeah. a while. Like yeah. people were lining up for, yeah. <laughs> for Bevmo. I for, took a lot of communion. You know what I'm saying? Well, wine right. sales, alcohol sales were up incredibly high. Seriously. Yeah. So one of our sponsors is 16600, this vineyard, this uh, really cool organic vineyard up in Sonoma. And we do their wine shows all the time and they sponsor us with wine and everything. And I've been talking to my buddy and he said during the pandemic, it just was like they, didn't, they couldn't get they couldn't get it out fast enough. And now all of a sudden, uh, like gym memberships, everybody <laughs> are shooting through and everyone's like, I got to I'm not going to survive this. I've really got to I really got to put the brakes on this thing. I'm not going to make it. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Jason, are you drinking that wine this evening? Or are you Correct. drinking yeah. it from so I don't know if you saw it when it started, but I've done an all right job. You've yeah. done actually quite well. 
I was concerned that you had put ice in that wine, but now I see you have it. So my, 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 my stream is better. I was wondering if you had gone the route of my mother. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I had a day with the, with the chat. The dark Lord was in rare. Like, well, you saw the video. Yes. He was, yes. he also tried to ride a Paw Patrol ride on off our couch. Um, he oh. also figured out how to break out of our house today. Um, oh God. He, he literally broke the molding that houses the deadbolt. He broke it from the wall and left the house at three without pants. And my actual cameras caught, I didn't grab the video. He just walked out to get a ball. He needed to get a ball. Mm. So. Did you just um, let him, just let him keep going? I'm not going to lie. For a split second, I was like, God, I wish the gate had been open. <laughs> that's super funny. That's super funny. Oh, let me go that so without pants all the time. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Christine, I have an image of your mother, like as you're uh, like be walking behind her crossing to like sneak out to a party. So be like, Christine, before you go, just get another ice cube and mommy's wine. <laughs> jangle, jangle, <laughs> jangle, jangle, honey. Hop to. I miss your father. I mean, I th my, my, a couple of my girlfriends have started putting ice in red wine, and I'm like, y'all, we are turning corners. I can't have it. We are turning corners. We are, we are becoming those women. So are we, are we there yet? Are we doing this? I mean, the ice and red wine is really, I feel like a, it's a call. It's a, they went yeah. like far here. They, they, they're doing like wine slushies here. Like it's like a mom thing here. Wine slushies are they like a big, frose big here. thing here. Oh, froze. Sure. I freak right. out when they put red wine in the fridge, like just to chill it. They go, oh, we'll put this in the fridge. I go, it's red. Ding dong. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Um, Christine, what, what do you feel about this huge influx of work in Atlanta? I mean, are you, there's so, like the industries in Atlanta now, what are the odds that you would I dedicate know. your life to, like across the country <laughs> and now you're, you've set up shop. I'm, I'm guessing you're here. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm in Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, here, yeah, I mean, I'm guessing you're in my house, right? <laughs> I am. I'm in your house. Hi, how are you? <laughs> why does your, why does my part of that part of the house look so much cleaner than mine? <laughs> Stay on your side. Stay on your side, Kate. Okay. I will. Thank you. <laughs> She's fun. She's fun, we're, guys. We're roommates. We have we're a roommates. It's fine. Um, <laughs> Where is <laughs> my wand to curl my, the wand? I told you you could use it, but you have to ask first. I needed it tonight for the I'm show. I'm on a call. We okay. Still talking? All right, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> um, oh, my God. Are you I... on a call with him? With him? With him? Okay, we'll talk later. We'll talk later. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, you know, it's so crazy. I mean, I, I could never have guessed that was going to happen. It, I thought it, when it first started to happen, it was just going to be like kind of that, oh, okay, there's tax credits and sort of a fluke thing. Yeah. But it makes a lot of sense. I mean, listen, I grew up there. I know what there is to be what the Atlanta offers and it really gets four seasons. I mean, you, it looks like a lot of different places. It's super like downtown Atlanta is very metropolitan. There's yep. a ton of workforce of people that want to be in that industry. So I just keep waiting to get a job that takes me back there because I have so many friends there. It's, you know, it's like my hometown. I used to go back to see my parents all the time and my parents moved here last year to Ugh. be with us. So it would oh, be fun great, to go back the there. And, uh, Wait a minute. Yeah, it's Wait, a back up. You're telling me you have grandparents who can help with the children? Yeah. Oh, my God. You son of a bitch. I hey, I need you to move out. I can't. Okay. I, can't. I, get, I get it. It's, I can't. What's that I can't. like? I'm too jealous. Tried. I tried. When I first moved out here, I begged my, my father-in-law. I said, listen, we'll buy a duplex. Move out for the love of God. Help us. And... Uh, Anytime any human has watched my children uh, in California, we paid. Money's exchanged, money. yeah. My money was exchanged. Tell you, listen, this all changed for us this summer. I mean, this is a very brand new thing. Um, awesome. And I was hoping that it was going to happen. But, you know, like I said, I just, I, I just never thought it really would. My parents are in their 70s. They're very plugged into their community in Atlanta. They have a lot of friends. They golf. They do church. They've got, they got their things set up there. Um, but I think the pandemic, like for many people, made us reevaluate the time we have left, how we want to live. They're, these are their only grandkids that they're going to have. Because you're the and only child, too. I mean, I mean right. yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. That helps. Did you so, dangle I mean, the kids in front of them? Did you, I, like, I've tried to dangle the kids like, to, like carrots and go like, hey, if you want to see these kids, you better come out here because we're not coming <laughs> 
but it was getting harder. Like it's way harder for us to it was uh, way harder for us to travel to them. And uh, every time we'd get off Zoom during like the time we didn't we didn't see each other for a year. Every time we got off Zoom, my mom would be like crying. Oh. It was just like. We have oh. to try, you know, they were like, we have to try to make this happen. They looked for a house, one fell through. I didn't think it was going to ever happen. They found this other place. It was just, it all, when it happened, it happened very quickly. And then they moved here and my mom broke her hip. No, Christine. I know. Oh, I can't so, believe how much that's your fault. Wow. I, no, I blame you. Oh, let me just but go really, ahead and... <laughs> No, I just really think it's hard. Hard. Right. She wouldn't have broken it had she not come out. It's totally come out and, yeah. I mean, no, that's it, that's that is like how a daughter would feel, but of course it's yeah. not Christine's fault. But that's uh, I mean, they have they found like that they like it here? Yes, I mean, and that's what that my that's point huge. was that it's taken a little time because there's been a lot of recovery for that. And you know, my but my mom is doing great now. I mean, <sighs> they're back to their old habits of they they're golfing again and they're getting used to California and they've found all their, you know, my dad has found like all the stores he likes to you know, grocery shop at and he's got to like some trees and he's growing herbs. And so, yeah, they're, they're making where, friends where, with all Where the herbs. does he like the grocery Wait, shop? I've got to guess. Back from Atlanta like the grocery shop? I've got to guess. All right, I'm going to say, I think Bristol Farms. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me guess. Let me guess. Let me okay. guess. Okay. Uh, Costco's definitely involved. There was a lot of Costco going. There's a lot of Costco happening. Well, first of all, yeah. that's my yeah. favorite smaller, store. A smaller frame, like a grocery store. I mean, he's not at John's level, but he would go. Um, he's not at Gelson's. He, like, if he Gelson's. sees the price of grapes at Gelson's, his head would forget it. Literally explode off of his body. I mean, Ralph's maybe like a good Ralph's at Hazeltine or something, but I'm going to. That's it. Yeah, I love Ralph. the Ralph. That's a good one. Wow, he's so funny. He was very like, not I mean, Whole Foods. Who can shop there? Crazy. Gelson? No, thank you. Ralph's. Ralph's is where it's at. <laughs> great. Ralph's is actually really good. Six good bottles Ralph. of wine. It's really you get great. a deal. Pretty good. Six bucks that off. Six bottles of wine. How can you? I mean, that's a great deal. <laughs> they make you buy. If you don't buy six, you don't get 30% off. So you have it's to buy so six. dumb. You might as well. It doesn't go bad, guys. It just gets better. It just gets better. You know, when, right, I, you can leave here. <laughs> when I bartended back in the day, if I overserve somebody, they I could be fined, right? In a way, we could sue Ralph's and say, listen, man, I didn't want to drink that much. Ralph's economically made me buy it six bottles at a time. I didn't want six, but I wanted one. They made me I, buy six and we should. I'm with you. I think we should. It's really, it's entrapment or it something is, like that. Sort of, <laughs> it's sort of <laughs> all entrapment. But I'm not going to lie to you. When you finish that one bottle, you're like, oh, thank God I have five more. Holy shit. What <laughs> I'm like, I'm not. Yeah. Six bottles. Sounds like, all right, Tuesday's you're covered. Really for 12. That's the next, that's the next step. You know, it's it was, great though. I mean, I have to say, having them here, like the, it is, it, it's awesome. We see them two or three times a week. Oh, they're not great. really like night sitters. Like they yeah. like to be in bed with you know NCIS by seven thirty eight. But um, but daytime stuff, pickups from school, they'll even do an overnight. Like that's great. We take the kids there, and they that's great. You, you know, that is, I mean, game. Changer. Jamie, you I try not to, to act too much, but you know, yeah. It's What's it feel like when your kids stay somewhere else overnight? What does that feel oh my, like? Oh my god! I mean, I'm right there with you. Like I never I, zero. Yeah, I, in the amount of times that we had been able to do that, it cost us more in the sitters than it did like for us to even go anywhere. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. paying more for the sitter than you are for like the okay hotel room yeah. or wherever you are. Yeah, it's like this is ridiculous. Yeah, so we never went out. We just never went out. I was just like, I'm not doing this. Yeah. Now what? Now the next. Now let me tell you. There's a trifecta, okay? Parents or, or family, whatever. That's that's the first one. The second one is if you can find a family that you really like, and you guys can do like a trade. Swap skedoodles. Swap it out. We started doing that's that. That's awesome. That's yeah, great. That's awesome. The third one is the 13 year old that lives across the street. Yeah. Yeah. Or down the street or wherever. You need a. You need someone or who's in not, your like, basement. Because right. you've <laughs> what that no I don't have a basement I might uh, have a basement I guess having like a a kid that you trust enough to come and do you know like a couple of hours even if you're home mommy's yes. helper or yes. at night watch a yeah. monitor situation but they're not like you know they don't have so much of a life that they're never available 
But I will tell you, the kids today, they won't, they don't do anything. They'll literally sit and do nothing and be on their phone for like two hours while your kids are. Can I tell you something, Jamie? You're, you're talking to the wrong kids because our babysitter is the most wonderful girl. She's, she's a senior in high school. She lives four blocks away from us. And I tried to get in touch right. with her once to let her know we were going to be late. And she was just, we got home like 15 minutes late. She was just sitting on the front porch. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, honey. I tried to call and text you. She's like, oh, I don't bring my phone to babysit. And I was like, I love you so much. <laughs> well, that's partially insane because oh, we don't have a phone in the house. Like we, she'd have to bring a phone. Like we don't have a house phone. I hadn't thought about that. So no. You're fired. Yeah. You went, <laughs> like, I keep like, her in the yard. Some kid didn't bring a phone to my house and something happened. She could not call 911. There but is no there goes, But there goes your theory that the kids today are always on their phone. No, no, no. They're, well, it's not about being on the phone, but she also like we had people and they didn't, she didn't like clear her own plates. Like it was, I was shocked. Like I, when I babysat as a kid, I would leave everything as I found it. Right. It like, oh, I would leave it better. It was like, couldn't give a shit. Just like, I mean, it wasn't mean. It wasn't malicious, but there was no like, oh my gosh, let me pick up after the kids. Like the kids' plates were exactly where I left them on the table. Like it, nothing was cleared to the sink. I was like, really? You didn't even clear the plates? Like I was shocked. Yeah. Was like, Ours was polite to a T, but she informed yeah, us that nice. my twins were too much. Couldn't give a, just yeah. like, no, I'm not. Oh, I didn't hear what was too much. Her my tw twins, the twins yeah. were too oh. much. Oh, that's oh, okay. okay. She's like, and thank you so much for the money. Here's my letter of resignation. I will never cross this threshold again. That was very similar to how it went, actually. And she's like, I think you're a wonderful family, but for sitting for you, I just, I can't. Yeah. Like, yeah. God. Yeah. Well, I, feel like that, I can't, but I dude, legally that's not just to sitting. Be my friend's opening a restaurant here. He can't, no one will work. He can't hire anybody. The guy who was the contractor who built the addition under our house. I talked to him recently. He's like, he goes, I'm stalled. I can't, we, no one will work. I can't hire anybody. Like no one will work. Like no one's working in restaurants. Nobody, nobody, none of the young people want to work anymore. They're like, we don't give a shit. So I don't know. I don't, that can't, well, that's, that's not good. I went to, when I went to Detroit, I shot this summer and I went to like this restaurant and they were like, oh, we're only open Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. And I was like, why? And they That's were like, weird. we don't have any staff. We don't have staff. We're out of staff. No one will work. And it was it's like, so what? crazy. I mean, you know, every time there's a commercial that comes on, you know, and your kids are like, mom, I want that. Mom, can you get me that? My, my reaction's always been, get yourself, go get a job. Yeah. I mean, ma'am, you know, ma'am, because like, I, I don't know, like, I, I get that I grew up in a di very different way, but I always definitely had a healthy respect for the fact that things cost money and yeah. that, you know, if I wanted something like I had to, it wasn't just like, like step by step was it like a different, I didn't even realize I was like paid for that job. Like I was working at the camp, I was working at the camp in the summer and I was oh, like, you know, I was doing like theater and like making like 50 bucks and I was making, like, yeah, you, know? you were making really good money. Right. That went to my college education. I was going to say, I probably never, did. did you see, did you know how much you were making no. and did you know what you could do with it or did it just kind of disappear and you didn't really see no. it? I didn't, it all went into a college fund. And then and when then, I got into college, it was like, cool, your college is basically paid for. So that's pretty awesome. What we did. It was it was like, oh. Seven years, right? Because you were on ABC for a long time, then it moved to CBS or something. Yeah, we did one like weird season on CBS. CBS was trying to make like a, they were trying to get into that sort of co-viewership family night thing. And so they did it for one year and then they're like, now we're good. <laughs> was that was really great. rare back then, but now that's yeah. the model where they're like, yeah. Oh, Lucifer, yeah, we'll pick it up. Netflix will pick it up for a season or two. Like everybody jumps around now, but back in the day that never happened. Yeah. No. Shows died yeah. and they were like, yeah, they never got Well, now everything is one company. It's on Hulu. Is it on NBC? Is it on Peacock? Yeah. Like it's right. all like yeah. one in the same so title. Funny. Yeah. Very strange. Did you? I always wonder too, because like your, like, did your mom get to? Did they pay your mom anything? Because I always think about like, and my buddy has a daughter who's like really started to work, but when she works, he can't work because he has to get her there. So I'm like, you take a pay cut so she can get paid, but like, that's not going to keep 
you guys in that apartment? Like, can you? And he's like, there's a thing that 20, at least what it's like. Parents can take a percentage. It's a 20, it's, I think it's 15% 20. or something as like a, as like a, like a they get to take. I think there is something legal that yeah. a guardian can take um, to cover their costs of living. Yeah. yeah. My mom didn't do that. Oh, 15%. Um, God bless. But, She's amazing. Yeah, I mean, Sean, my mom. Sean Patrick is right, 15%. 15. Okay. Your mom sounds yeah. awesome. Like, I know. She really does sound I know. awesome. I mean, other than the ice and the wine, I mean, everything was on the up. Honestly, Christine, I have, a, I have a question for you about like yeah. growing up as a child actor because it really does go by the parents, like the, the, the kids who did survive and then go on to great careers. The parents were totally involved and were like, you're not no you're not going partying <laughs> this is crazy you're nine years yeah. old yeah um and so but did you you must have seen other kids that you came up with who were like it went awry it just oh it, yeah i, I feel mean, like yeah. that's more the norm than the than what what you experienced i mean most of the people i've i've seen grow up on little disney shows or whatever it, it doesn't end well yeah what well, were their names christine okay so there was no I mean, yeah, like we all know, we know the stories and, you know, we know it's like, I always say, like, I, I didn't end up in a gutter. And I think there's a couple reasons for that. You know, I've, I've watched a lot of people go those ways. And I think I have a theory about it. When you're young, you think it's going to last forever. Yeah. Okay? So mm -hmm. that's number one. So you put all your eggs in this basket because everybody is kissing your ass and everybody tells you you're very cute or you're very talented or you're very pretty or whatever that is. And for that moment, that's true. But the fame amplifies that. So if you're told that all day at work and then you also go out into the world or the Instagram of today, yeah. which I did not have, thank God. Thank and God. then you're, comp you're fed that same kind of feedback loop. It's a, it's a false reality because eventually the job will end and eventually you will get braces or you will grow out of your cuteness or you will have to prove that you can actually act. And either the industry won't care or you won't get that job because that's the way it goes. You don't keep just getting every job and your ego takes such a huge hit and you haven't done anything else to fall back on that. It's like a complete crash and burn. And it's just like a, it's just like a, it's like a distorted reality. Yeah. You know, you have to be in it. If you're going to be an actor, you have to be in it because you love the work. You have to be in it because you love what you do can't be in it for the fame or the money or whatever it is because all of that is bleeding so like for me anyway coming off that show I honestly was like is anyone gonna ever hire me again like I haven't auditioned since I was 12 I'm 19 now like this is this is a weird feeling I feel I super insecure up. how am I gonna make this happen I'm gonna go to college so maybe I get something else if I just decide I want to say take this job and shove it I can Right. Um, but I'm also just going to keep doing it because it's what I love. And I just kept like finding new paths. It, this is the only industry I know. It's the only thing I've ever really, truly loved to do. But I've continued to find like different jobs in this industry that fulfilled me and made me happy. And, um, and I guess it was never like, I mean, there've been ups and downs, certainly, but I never hung myself worth in it. And I think that's, hmm. That's oh, important. I, I think that's really important. I think yeah. that's really important. We got to clip that anything, out. You know? What you was college like for out. you when you were kind of a known commodity? What was college like? Was it crazy? Um, you know, I, I went to UCLA, so I went to a really big school. Oh, um, that's great. So, yeah, I wasn't, I would say I was like, I was in a sea of people and I didn't live on campus. I was still working at the time. She so I was kind of in and out. She lives with me. So, yeah, at least still right. lives with me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Put the scrunchie on the door. Okay. The door. I didn't realize. Yeah. It wasn't like Brooke Shields going to Princeton. No. I mean, I mean, but I will say, like in high school, there was a moment, you know, where the show was super popular and uh, I was definitely like pretty recognizable at a certain point and like, I think I was with like a boyfriend or something. We decided to go randomly like ice skating one day. So we go to ice skating and there was like a birthday party happening there. 
and I got like swarmed by 14 year olds and I was like, I can't go ice skating anymore. Um, or like if I would go out to like the Beverly Center and go shopping with one of the other girls on the show, she was also very recognizable. And like, we would just be followed kind of from like Contendo Casuals to <laughs> Bebe to, you know. <laughs> it got to a point where I was like, I think we're, these guys are in the women's section of Contendo Casuals. I don't think this is, I think they're looking at us. Um, but yeah, I mean, I know. let's go to the limited too. Let's just get there quick. <laughs> get there quick. I need a vest. <laughs> it's Spencer's gifts. We're going to Spencer's yes, gifts. Please. But you know, it was never like, I don't know. It was a different world too. You know, again, yeah. like it was teen beat. It was tiger beat. It was yeah. Navy people magazine. Like it was a much more innocent time to grow up in. And I'm very happy that, that I grew up in the nineties, honestly, because of that. Yeah. Is is your husband um like how, how did you and your husband meet? My husband and I met in a theater company. Oh. So, yes. Yep. When I was in my 20s, I as one of my things to like and honestly, I think this was one of the other things that kept me sane in my life is that I went back to theater and yeah. I made this family in this theater company and they are still some of my best friends to today and they didn't oh, care if I booked this job or that I'd been on a TV show, like nothing about the past or the future mattered. The only thing that mattered was like right now. And yeah. we had some of the, I mean, it was some of the best years of my life and it made me feel That's like lovely. I had a place to go to, you know? So anyway, I'd been in the theater company for four or five years. I was, I was working in it. I was also choreographing in it and he was in a show and I choreographed the show, but I wasn't in it. And I was like, that guy's kind of cute. And I saw the show and I was like, Oh, he's really funny too. And then we started doing shows together. And well, one thing led to another. We had a showman. And then, yes. yeah, we basically. And we went to promoses for drinks after a show on like yes. a Friday night. I mean, we met, yeah, we met in the company. We were friends for a long time. And then, you know, we both just decided to like give it a whirl. But he is also a recovering actor. Um, he <laughs> is a, uh, <laughs> he's a therapist. Is there, oh, okay. does he run a recovering actor support group? And, and when does it meet? I'm asking for a friend, but it, right. it, <laughs> well, it's yeah. funny though. I do wonder like if, if you getting married to somebody that's our age, like if you're like, oh, this person knew, was like, I was their teen crush or I was like, you know I mean? Like, did he, had he watched you when you were a kid? Was this there is like the greatest a, thing? My husband only played, my husband's from the Midwest. He grew up on a hobby farm and all he did was play sports. He never watched step by step because he was at a football game like oh, every Friday it. night, baseball no. game, wrestling. Like he was like, Yeah, sweetie, I love you, but I don't know that. You lied. My <laughs> wife did the same thing. She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. You were on what? And she was like, <laughs> And then years <laughs> later, one of her friends was like, Oh, she she knew it. She totally she's seen you on my <laughs> She totally oh, had seen yeah. your show. And I was like, I knew she did. <laughs> and now it turns out it was a bad choice for her and she got really screwed over in the whole situation yeah clearly yeah clearly, <laughs> clearly it went awry somewhere. um who's the who's the uh tougher parent you or your husband who's probably the disciplinarian me. yeah probably me I mean, I mean, she's making camera recordings, so. That's, yeah, I am. That's why I thought the same thing. I thought he's yeah. the softy. Is he the I he, he want the kids run to? Yeah, I mean, he and, you know, my he and my daughter, like, certainly, I, I think I was definitely, like, the primary one they would always run to. And as my daughter's gotten older, she's sort of started to gravitate towards her dad a little more. And, you know, my son is still trying to crawl back up in me. I mean, he just can't get <laughs> yes. enough. Do you want to show your other video, speaking of... Yeah. Body parts. Oh, is it, is it a video of her son trying to crawl back up in her? Wait. No, but this, I okay. Know, this I again. don't know the rating for this. I think this is NC-17, I feel like. Is oh, this? So yeah, this, much. a friend of mine just sent me. I forgot that I had sent this to her. We were on a text chain for a while back. And this is just me. We were in the hot tub again. Like, I'm with my kids. I was just, you know, chatting away. And my daughter decides to say it's what my she life all the time. Nobody leaves me alone. I came out of mommy's vagina before, and I come is a big girl, and I am four years old. There you have it, folks. We just wanted to say hi. Pretty much everything you need to know for today. 
Did so we know where she came from. How many billions of views did that get? <laughs> That's the first time I've ever showed that to anybody. Oh my that is... God. That's the funniest thing I've ever but seen. Also, can I tell you, like I we've had this discussion on the show before. I use the correct anatomical I terms. I knew you were gonna and say I gotta, anatomical. I'm like uh, like the other day, like my boys just started T ball, and I was like, You have to wear a cup. And they're like, What's a cup for? I'm like, It's to protect your testicles. And they're like, What's in the testicles? And I was like, That's where your seed is. It's called the sperm. I mean, like, for instance, right. like, I'm not gonna, why am I gonna make up fake words for the thing? It's your vulva, it's your labia, yeah, it's your, I, I mean, it's your vagina. Yes, you came out. But can't. now, but James has started to tell me, like, if, if, like if he'll take a bath with me or whatever, he'll be like, I don't, please don't tell me with your vagina. And I was like, no. totally. I mean, oh, but you know, it's like, I, this is, I mean, this is what I was, I was told to, you know, tell them too. And we were, I, we were not really, I wasn't really raised that way. Like, nobody I was, was definitely really talking no. about anything. Like your bottom. All very like, <laughs> was it? yeah, yeah. shrouded around. But I, I mean, yeah, I think it's, you know, my, everybody, my kids have asked me like about, I mean, all kinds of bodily functions and I just try to be as scientific yeah. as I can. Yeah. Yeah. I thought kids came out of your front bottom. What is this? What is okay. this? Oh, no, God. It's, so, yeah, cool. okay. So it's called a perchina. It's called a perchina. I know there's a bottom and then there's a front bottom. I'm confused. Yeah, yeah. the front bottom is also area. called a perchina. So you could, it's a perchina. So you Which could just know. Nice. I sort of thought Volvo was one of the Pokemon when he heard us. <laughs> yes. came up and he's like, which Pokemon is that? And I was like, it uh, it's a mythical one. It's yeah, it's a it's a no, that's the that is clitoris. I know which, Molly, evolves, thank you. which evolves into I, told you, I came in like my two daughters are only 18 months apart, so they would bathe together. And you know, they were in the bath and they're old, they were old enough to the I was like running in out of the bathroom. And when I, I ran out, when I came back in, one was literally like this into the other one, and she was like, Oh hey. <laughs> And they both I'll looked up at me like, hey. And the other one did too. And she was like going through the other one's junk. And I was like, I can't be Older. here. <laughs> Walk out of the room. I, like, I, can't, I can't be part of this. Jamie, please don't refer to the girl's uh, vulva area as d their junk. I thought it was an interesting choice as well. <laughs> What is this called, Daddy? You're junk. It's junk. I told it's you, junk. I used to, I used Go to be with it's two junk. little girls when they were like tiny, tiny little girls, and um, but I would cover my my own junk with like a uh, wet, like a towel. Yours I is junk, by the way. I that is my correct. Total, fucking <laughs> useless junk. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. And but it was more so because they were just, you know, at that age, they were just babe, like little babies, yeah. and they were grabbing stuff, and so I was like trying to cover my junk so they wouldn't grab it. And so finally, they were getting to an age, and I started to get out of the tub, and um, and they, I think they caught like a side glimpse, and they go, go, they went, Daddy, how come you have a tail? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I go, I go, I go, oh, our last bath. That's our last official <laughs> bath. And um, oh, and by the way, you should tell your mother that Daddy has a tail because I think I don't think she remembered that Daddy has a tail. Anymore. You're like you pronounced <laughs> giant tail incorrectly. You just said tail. tail. That's <laughs> weird. Tail. Yeah. I mean, it's an Irish tail, so it's more like a you know like a Rottweiler that's had the tail. <laughs> okay. it's, a tail. it's a tail, nonetheless. It's a tail. <laughs> My kids are really I'm into right. like. I'm sorry, I cooked two meals and I started drinking wine way too early tonight. So, <laughs> Dan, you, you've been at it a while. My kids are really into, of course, they think the potty words are really funny right yes, now. Yes, mm. yes, yes. They're correct. It drives me crazy. Yeah. Oh, yep. Like sorry, in the car. Wrong. I mean, they're just, you know, everything is like your butt, your mom's butt, butt, <laughs> yeah. Look yeah, at your mom's they, butt. Uh, like, poop, it's poop. not, not funny. <laughs> a lot of poop happening. A lot of poop, a lot of poop talk. So that's like the next thing. It's like I, you know, every time there's like potty words and I'm like, okay, we're done. Thank you very much. We're done with the potty words. And then the potty words keep coming. <laughs> My idle threats is me saying, you pick a toy, we get home and you can watch me throw it out. Whoa. <laughs> have you, here's the deal. Have you followed? And then through? they both go. Have you had to follow through? Have you ever oh, followed have, through with it? I have fully oh, yeah. done that. My yeah. kids got a bunch of those like fidget things for Christmas. Yeah. And there oh, was yeah. like a fidget calendar of yeah. things, yes. right? It was yeah. like an advent thing. 
So yeah. every day they would get to put their hand in and they would get out a fidget. Or there was one that was like a reindeer or something and they would not stop fighting over it. And I told them to please stop, please stop, please stop. And finally I went, you know what? And I went like this and I threw it in the trash. And I said, if we can't play, we can't share nicely, we don't play with it at all. And they both looked at me like, yep. We had, know we I'm not playing. We yeah. had a comedian, G- we had Josh Wolf on a, a, a few months ago and he had taken his son's Game Boy and told him that if, you don't knock it off. I'm going to, I'm going to trash it. And he had to, and I don't know that I could have pulled the trigger on smashing a Game Boy. Like, I don't think Here's I could have. Exactly. No, you got, you got to start small. Like you got to think like an LOL doll this big or like, mm. you know, a squishy or like, yeah. you know, we're not throwing away a Barbie dream house in the trash, but. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> I thought of that same story, also- Jason, because I remember it. And I talked to Jace uh, 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 Wolf after that, Josh Wolf after that. And I said, well, did you, you had to buy him a new one. He goes, "Oh yeah, two weeks later, I bought a new Game Boy." And I was for like, "For his birthday, I remember." A terrible lesson. Yeah. That. You, you got the lesson of don't be an idiot and throw out a Game Boy. Yeah, yeah, you got to stick to it if you're going to make a threat like that. I thought it was the PlayStation. I thought it was something. No, it was, a, it was definitely a Game, Game Boy. Boy. Yeah. Well, it then that he should have been thrown out. <laughs> what's, what's anybody doing with a Game Boy these days? Come on, kids get us have uh, the boxes. Those boxes from like the chairs from Christmas, the giant boxes that's, are still in their room as forts. Like that's like their. Can favorite. I tell you, we have the same. Our neighbor was like, "We got um, we got an ottoman in this massive box, and we feel like your boys would like it." They dragged it up the street to us, and it is the greatest. There's like a little hole in the roof for like a sunroof. The boys sitting there to watch their TV. I mean, whatever. Like it's the it's the greatest thing ever. And but it, there is going to come a day when I'm like have to be like, well, we're gonna have to have our living room back now. I know, but it's so it's sweet. Like, in the meantime, it's the tent. It's the tent that is yes. falling apart. That I cannot like. I put it away, and every time I put it away, I'm like this dumb thing. I hate it. I have to twist it. I'm like fighting with it. Right. And, like, get it closed, <laughs> and I'm like yes. throwing it in the thing. And I'm like, I hate this tent. I've almost thrown it away three times. But guess where she's sleeping tonight? In her tent. tent. Yeah. Every like three, every two, three months, she's like, I want that tent. I'm like, Yep. God. Sometimes I think they can stand when you hate something like that, and they gravitate to it intentionally and never let it go. Can I tell you what I did? I got a big box once, and I put, I went around the house, and I just put toys that I didn't think they played with anymore, and I put them all in the box, and I gave my, I gave them a month to ask for it. And if they didn't ask for it within the month, I donated yeah. it all. That's a great idea. Yeah, we I mean, I just throw their toys away in the night. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to do it. That is actually much. That's a much better idea. I mean, there is come on. There's some things that I'm just like, guys, we're done with this, or this is broken, or we can't. We don't play with this anymore, and someone else needs this. Yep. <laughs> By the way, speaking of toys, Jason, do you have that picture I sent you? I do. Yeah. So my girlfriend, um, her daughter had, uh, it was bring a stuffed animal to uh, school day. And um, this is what her daughter. (laughs) Do you see the stuffed animal she chose? Oh. She brought an entire wolf. Just go. I was like, Tara, I have to show this picture. But also what an amazing mom Tara is. It's like, okay, pick a stuffed animal. Sure. That's that's the one you want? Sure. Yes. And let's stick it in your backpack. <laughs> like that made me laugh so hard. Bring a stuffed animal to school. Oh my god! Great. It's like as big as she like, is. It is. Ugh. Anyway, someone's like, "Oh picture. god, what an unfortunate looking child coming out of that backpack." <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't want to be the party pooper, but does yeah, everyone? I know. I know. I know. I could see it in your eyes, Jamie. I thought you were going to tell us again. Here's what to- happened. And Christina, oh, there's a the thing, guys. Over. Guys, yeah, this um, is the thing. I had to cook two meals tonight, and I just, I only cook since the pandemic. I only cook with wine. So true. I want to tell you. Did I tell you guys? Um, true. Yeah. Is this thing? It's pretty good. I had to start this, like, eight Here's the deal. Time, my so wife my put the kids to bed. Day. I'm the disciplinarian. So right now, I hear my kids. They were supposed to be in bed by mm-hmm. 730. Oh, and sure. I tell her every week that we do the show. And then she's like, yeah, yeah, it's not going to be a problem. And then I hear them. And then I'll get, I'll go out, and they'll all be up. Like scrolling photos from when they were one and two years old. Like, oh, cute. Yeah, I'm, lucky. I'm I'm East Coast, so mine have been drugged for several hours now. Yeah. So oh I, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, listen, we can go all night, but I feel I always feel terrible for our oh, guest because guests, we're sitting here and all of a sudden it's nine minutes, in, and the guest has got to be like, "Is this show ever going to end?" This show. Yeah. How does <laughs> Christine, oh, any, Patrick Murphy any, has asked if you had any stories or recollections from leisure class. He was interested in knowing. 
Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah. So the Leisure Class was a, a, a movie I did for HBO, um, Project Greenlight. And it was a super unique experience because we were filming this movie, but then they were also making a movie about filming the movie. <laughs> um, very yeah. meta. So um, we were kind of in a reality show, but... But, you know, I would say that like less so, it was more so about the people behind the scenes, less so about the actors. Um, it was a really cool experience, actually. I don't, I don't know how well the, the film was really received, but I had a great time doing it. Um, it was a lot of improv. Um, Jason Mann was a lovely human to work with, as was the rest of the cast. And uh, I had just gotten married and my husband had gone off. This was when he was still like acting. He had gone off to do a theater festival in um, Australia for like six weeks. So it was just, it was really, oh, you were one of the final directors. Jason. Wow. Yeah, sure was, yeah. Interesting. Sean, yeah, That's Sean, fascinating. Sean Murphy. Um, so it was just a really nice, like, it was really good timing because I was suddenly like working a lot and I was really happy to kind of have like a whole new group of friends for, you know, six weeks while my husband was away. Um, but yeah, it was a cool experience. I think it's a very difficult experience for directors because you're so under the microscope and I know he probably did come across a very different way. He was actually very warm. He was very, he like emails me on my birthday every year. Um, He's very, um, uh, very collaborative, wanted to like give us a lot of free reign to try things and do stuff. Um, but I think they also really liked, I think the show really liked the tension he had with some of the producers. And I think they really kind of amplified it up a little bit that way. So, you know, but I got to meet Matt Damon. So there you go. Ooh. I was going to say Matt Damon and Affleck, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah, he came to the, he came to the premiere. It was fun. I mean, that he just seems like the nicest dude. I mean, he seemed really nice. We just took yeah. a picture on the red carpet, but he, yeah, he was yeah. cool. Yeah, he's a he seems like a pretty smart guy. Oh. Well, Christine, where can people find you? Uh, people can find me. You can find me on Instagram at Yo Lakin, which is my handle. Yo Lakin. Yo Lakin. Um, yeah, but I'm at uh, I'm on Facebook. Sometimes I I post there but mostly instagram twitter is also at yo lakin um and i am mostly doing um i'm mostly directing television now so i the have goldbergs. a show coming out the goldbergs right yeah awesome. i've done a bunch of the episodes of the goldbergs for abc i have a um, show coming out on apple called you only live twice and then i'm getting ready to go do high school musical for disney plus oh, oh my god cool. that's amazing, amazing. That's yeah amazing. it's fun stuff well, I gotta you tell you, do you guys notice this at all? Like, as as far as one of our guests is concerned, she seems like one of the best parents that we've had on. Yeah, like it's yeah, can't be true. I, like, no, I, it's like, crazy. I either that or you're a really fantastic actor because you both maybe huh? you seem like you really have it all together, which is rare for this show. It's really oh rare. man, I don't know. She set I the mean... bar higher than the standards we're used to here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, most people come on with uh, emergency room visits and just a train wreck. Of... Yeah, well, listen, my kids are only three and five. There's a lot more you know, to come. I got a lot of time to just totally shit the bed. So, yeah, you gotta come. You gotta come back and visit with us again. Uh, let us know how things are going. I will. Yeah, you have yeah, been you such an absolute delight. I mean, you are so fun and Too easy nice. breezy. Thanks, not, guys. She's not. Hey, she's what? perfect. She's not too anything. All right, well, I'm just saying. I'm just and saying. it's called a labia. Um, oh, I can't. Don't. He, literally, I, since I, we, since we, I said, you know, hey, since Chris he's out, he's he took himself out. Yeah, okay. French accent. Since, That's since we said that Kate was going to be on, or that, that you were going to be on the show, Kate was like, she is so hot. Oh my god! You are checking out the bone of your arms, by the way. I used to. I truly, though. I used to. I used to teach bar method, and I was like, my deltoids used to look like that. But I'm like, I want to know. I want to know what she's doing again. Anyway, it's neither here nor there. Still picking up 35 pound kids who want to be inside me. That's what's going on. That's not working for me, Christine. <laughs> well, again, but thank you so much for being with Thanks us for having for so me. long. You're so down to earth, and fun. everybody, go check out That's everything fun. Christine Lakin's ever done. Go I now. mean, for someone who's a child you. actor, you are not as effed up as we thought you would have been. I mean, this yeah, is we had you a know, bingo game going, and you didn't yeah. hit 
any of them. You didn't. You I didn't rob a lot, video actually. store. You never robbed a video store. You, you there was no Corey Feldman stories. Like this is a disaster. This, this other things we should be talking about. I do. I did. I do have some Corey Feldman stories, but we'll have to do those. We'll talk about that. That'll be in the Patreon <laughs> account. That's for Patreon. That's exactly. All right, Jason, take Thanks, out there. Let's let Christine go. Christine, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. So nice to Kate, meet you. I'll see you later at home. I'll okay. See you. Okay. Yeah. Also, if he's okay, coming kidding. over. Honestly, it's an earplugs night for me. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, thank you. Very oh, okay, well. now you say it. Ladies and gentlemen, Christine Lakin. Bye, Christine. She I'm obsessed so with her. Fun. No, no. She's the best. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, I'm obsessed with her. I know. Kate? Me too. Me too. I hate it. I just, I felt like. Wait, so, so, Kate, who was your, who was your cr teenage crush? Because a lot of people have said actually, Christine was I there. Actually, I have to love her. I did love her. I was a very big Jonathan Taylor Thomas in um, uh, Home, Improvement, Home Improvement, which was the I, same era. I was uh, Fran Sinclair um, from Dinosaurs. From Dinosaurs? Mm -hmm. You are... Jessica Wal it was Jessica Walter. Oh, you know, I did a movie with her. Did you really? Yes. Jamie and I were talking about her earlier today. She literally is one of the most fantastic human beings. She on the is. Planet. And she also was so nice to me. We're in makeup chairs with each other. I was this movie called Henry Poole is here. And my part got cut that day. And then they brought me back the next day for a different part. And she was just like, the business. Am I right? <laughs> I was like, did you just the business me? <laughs> yeah, the business. <laughs> I'm in the business, I guess. <laughs> like I was, I was, I had no chill about it. I was like, yeah, this happens to me all the time. Jamie's crush was Betty White, says Kyle <laughs> Williams. Uh, yeah. Listen, from the Mary Tyler Moore show, absolutely. Although Mary, Mary Tyler Moore was one of my huge crushes. How could you? I mean. Oh, she was amazing. Mary like Moore, like Moore. Dick Van Dyke, oh, Mary Dick Tyler Moore Dick. was she was From that era. Uh, you know who I had a little crush on? Justine Bateman. Oh, I get that. Family ties. Early, early. Yes, yeah. I would yeah. agree with that. Early, My first early. one was uh, from. Well, she eventually became Fergie, but when she was Stacy Ferguson on Kids Incorporated, was my first was Ooh. my first kid. Oh, crush. you had cable, huh? Cool. Uh, the, no uh, Disney Channel. Charles in charge. Who was the one from Charles in Charge? That was the one I liked. Oh, Nicole Egger or Jennifer Runyon? Both. I don't know. One of them. <laughs> you know what I really liked was the girl from movies. I was more of a movie guy, like Can't Buy Me Love, like the girl from that, or like oh, Phoebe movie. Kate's was another. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Actually, I had a thing for Jennifer Jason Lee. Respectable. Yeah. All right, listen, this show's gone on far too long. This far is too long. Yeah. Um, wrap this thing up, would you? Kate, go ahead. All right. Well, if you have made two dinners this evening and had some wine, or if you have been scratched in the face by your child, or if you are chugging a goblet of wine because you I've done twins, pretty well, actually. You did great. Because your twins have ended your will to live then you have found a home here with us at the parents lounge if you're following if you're listening uh watching this wherever you are like us rate us review us it helps with the algorithm come back every tuesday night because share the show while it's happening share the that show helps. while it's happening yeah okay jason would you like to do this or no i just wanted to add that one thing um and thank you guys so much we will see you next week stay well keep those kids safe Big Good night, everybody.